Yes, sir. There we go. Yes, sir. You're down just a little bit today. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me. You're down there for a reason. You're down there for a reason. You read the title. I'm going to show you how I make fused Claptons. If you caught the live show with Trey Mink from Mink Machine, thanks again, Trey. Uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, and I briefly mentioned that my vaping journey has been changing as of late, and I've been using fused Clapton coils. It's what I use. I use it all the time. That's It's just where I'm at. If it'll take it, it gets it, and I've been... I've been just heaven vaping. It, it, it's fantastic. It's just, I've never had so much flavor, so many weird nuances I've never had before. You know, juices that I know, and I know well. I'm getting a whole new flavor profile out of these things. It's so good. A single coil vapes like a dual coil. Speaking of, we are going to be loading up a single coil in my Royal Hunter. As janky as she is these days, I mean, this thing has been worked. I still use this at least once or twice a week. Uh, the Royal Hunter from Council of Vapor. This is still a classic to me. It's still a great Addy. The flat on flat. It's just a great Addy for me. And I, I really enjoy it. We're going to throw a single coil in here. And I'm going to demonstrate, you know, and talk about why I like these Clapton's. So, whoa, Fuse Claptons, Trevor, what, what happened? It just happened. My friend Rob Key, shout out to Rob Key, he sent me a few to play with, and he's like, try these out, try these out, and I, and I was trying them out, and, I, and at the time I was, I was into it, but I was kind of like, oh, I don't know if I'm into this. Because I didn't know, like, do I want to go through the effort of doing these? Do I? You know, do I want to fall in love with this thing and really not ever make them? So I did some searching. Found Grim Green's video. And he demonstrated how he does fused Claptons. He had mentioned he learned everything he learned from the Art of Vaping YouTube channel. Squid Dude. Shouts to Squid Dude and Grim Green. Grim, Ar Grim Army. Grim Army, dude. Grim Army, and uh, so I want, I'm going to go ahead and link those in the description. The, these two videos really helped me a lot. Fuse Claptons, once you get it, is not a difficult thing to do. You can whip it up, it doesn't take as long as you think. And I strongly believe that the amount of effort it takes to make a Fuse Clapton coil is well worth it for the quality of it. I have a dual in here, it's originally a .17. And I'm already going to tell you now we might have focusing issues because in the light situation, we're going to do the best we can. I'm thinking I'm going to put on a glove to kind of hold the wire up. I think I will. Why not? And I need a drill. I want to make sure this is nice and focused. Hashtag drill diaper. Hash brown drill diaper. I've been trying to get into the hashtag thing. I'm on Instagram, right? <laughs> and I'm trying, man. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta be more social, man. I know I do. Hash brown drill diaper. Why'd I do this? Just to quiet it up a little bit. It didn't work too much, but it worked. I'm going to set my drill off to the side. Drills. Let's talk about some things you're going to need. You're going to need some swivels. These are the swivels I use. KVD. Okay. You can get these ball bearing size 2. You can get these at Walmart on the cheap. There's a bunch in there. So you have a bunch of spares. That's what I use for my fishing swivels. Don't get crazy like, oh god, it's too much all at once. Just relax, take a breath. We're going to talk about each and every part of this. This is just how I personally do them. 
drills. This is a Porter cable. You can get them super cheap at um, Harbor Freight on the cheap. I was just looking at them the other day. Very, very cheap. I have a dual coil on this. On the Velocity V2, Velocity 2, whatever you want to call it. And I'll show you the build a little bit later, but that's owning a 0.17 dual coil, six wrap sheets, 26 gauge Canthal. Fuse clapped in with a 38 outer. And that's, I believe that's what we're going to do. We're going to do 36 today. Yeah, I picked 36 today because I'm kind of running low on all the others. Uh, so these are the, those are the swivels I use. Drills, you can find them anywhere. And might I recommend garage sales? Do a little swindling, dude. Just show up and just be like, look, I know you want 10 for the drill. You gotta drop it to two, bro. Drop it to two, and I'll walk, you know? Oh, you won't take two? Just walk off, they'll, they'll pull you back. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, Drill's super easy to come by, and they're on the cheap. Wires. What wire do I use? I use Nichrome 80 for everything I'm using. For a Nichrome 80 blend. My personal favorite is from Humble Wick, but I highly urge you guys to get out there and you just use your favorite brand. This is my favorite brand, and guess what? It's cheap. Very cheap. Even better. So. Let's take it down. Bear with me. I'm going to do the very best I can. I'm going to run through all the steps. Actually, I'm going to leave it up for just a second. But I'm going to go through all the steps of making a fused Clapton coil. First thing I'm going to need. I'm going to need some 26 gauge Nichrome 80. This is what I prefer. You can use Canthal A1 if you'd like. I'm going to measure out about 18 inch piece and my little thing broke off but that's okay we can go get it later there we go to the other side so about an 18 inch piece here and I'm gonna straighten it using the method we all know and love twisted messes and I just take a pair of pliers and I want to make a pretty good 90 degree angle in here. Now, that's quite a bit of extra. See that? That's quite a bit of extra. That's going to help you in the end. This is just what I remember. This is just how I like to do it. Pop it in your drill. We're using the angle. I want to pull the drill nice and close. I've got to tighten this down. The angle is sitting. There we go. See that? And make sure it stays right in the middle. Just like that. Now that's locked in there, pair of pliers, I'm gonna grab it right on the end. We all know and love this method right here, right? Ken's the man. Pull it nice and snug and just fire it. That's more than enough. Now we're gonna pull it out of the drill. Remember, 26 gauge. I use 26, 28, and 24 for my cores. A core is what's in the inside of whatever you wrap it around. A core, like an apple core, you know, a core. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna loop the ends together. I'm gonna overlap just like this, and then I'm gonna bend it with the other bend. Just do the best you can there. So now I have two ends. I'm going to take my pliers, and for this part right here, I like to use my, which I highly recommend these, you can get them at Michael's, you can get them on Amazon, uh, eBay. I like to use my nylon pliers, and I'm going to pinch both of these, just like that. Do you see how right at the top here, they're, they're damn close? See that? There's a whole loop. I want them right close to the top. So I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to gently pull down, and I'm going to let the end happen here. Now at this point, 
you could take something like this, put it in there, and pull down on it. You could do that. That's no big deal. Just wrap it in there, pull down on it. But what I like to do is I like to take my fingers and just run it down. Just a couple times here. Those are nice and parallel to each other. Nice and parallel to each other. That's what you're looking for. Right there. Right? Load it back into the drill. Same way you did before to, to straighten it. I like to make, I, at this point, the thing is, is I want you to understand something, is you're always going to have twists in this wire after you make it. That's always going to happen. Don't fight it. You can straighten it out later. Just let it happen. Do the best you can. Nice and snug there. And there we go. It's in there. Running as parallel as we could get it. See how there's a little twist in there? Right there. Yep. It's gonna happen. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Next up, now I'm gonna take you down. I'm gonna try and get you nice and close here, so bear with me on the camera work here. Move some tools. Put you right over here. Bring you down. I'm going to show you what I did. So, this right here is my cutting board. It's just big and heavy. And all I did was take one of these hooks. You can find them anywhere. They're hooks for multi-purpose hooks for anything, really. And I screwed it right into the side. And I can take this out whenever I want. I can screw it in, screw it out. So when I make these, I screw it in. I take my swivels. I have multiple swivels here. I connect those together. I got three here. I connected them all together. Looped it around this hook. And I've noticed when I was first doing fused Clapton coils, I was realizing that it was jumping an awful lot. I didn't like that by simply taking this piece of zip tie and just jamming it in there to really hold this stiff I haven't had any problems since so that's if, if it's loose on your hook whatever you decide to use here make sure that's nice and uh, just cram something up in there in this case zip tie there we go holds it nice and straight as I turn you a little bit here you can see my swivels here. Looks like I've got a little bit of a mess here. I don't leave. Yeah, there. You see here, it's connected, it's closed. This one, I never close. It's open. It's always open. There we go. Always open. I'm going to hook my wire into that. I'm just going to lay my drill right down on the table, hook it around, and pull it tight. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and just see if I can twist it to where it's nice and parallel again. Let me back you up over here. There we go. And the wire's not really parallel, right? So I'm just pulling on the drill, and I'm going to twist this, and when I see it get parallel, as I twist my swivel, I'm going to pull it tight, and then I'm going to pinch in right on the end of the swivel. So I just literally, I just took my fingers and I pinched it down, the end. And so now we have a pretty parallel piece of, uh, you know, 26 gauge nichrome 80. About 9 inches at this point because we cut that 18 and a half. So do you rem now? I want to show you something. So here's a swivel. When I fire the drill, watch the swivel. See how it just spins? It's not gonna twist the wire. It's gonna hold it.
parallel for us while we wrap around whatever we decide to use. I like 36 Nichrome 80. I like 38 Nichrome 80. I like 40 Nichrome 80. And I could even go lower, but that's just kind of where I sit for my gauges. Uh, you know, this is a core. This is what we're gonna wrap. We're gonna use to wrap the outside with those smaller diameter or smaller gauge wires. Um, I've used 24 instead of 26, and I've used 28. I like to use 28 inside of tanks, all kinds of tanks. In fact, I just put one in my Haster RDTA, and I loved it. Fantastic, babe. Dude. Back it up here. So, do you remember? Right here, remember I told you to keep that long? We have a 36 gauge from Humble Wick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my tweezers here and I'm going to pull off. It has this protective cover, they all come with this. And it holds your wire nice and neat for you. I'm going to take that completely off. So I've got it completely off and I'm using my finger to hold the wire on the spool. Now for how my drill is set up, I'm going to go underneath, okay. so why am I using tweezers here? I have When I've tried to use pliers, I just snap this wire because it is very thin, it's like a piece of hair. When I use tweezers, it doesn't seem to break as much. Pull it kind of snug and just wrap around these right here. Just wrap around them. See how it kind of holds together and it's not snapping or breaking? I can just sit here and keep going. If it pops out, I just keep on going. Is it, This is, might be a little excessive going around, but I, I don't. I want that. I want to make sure this is going to be secure, and that's all you need. Now, as you can see here, I have my spool. I'm going to roll it up. Now, you can use it like this, but I've, I'm more comfortable, like, flipping it and putting my thumb right there, right in that. This is a nice little indentation for me to put my thumb in there and rest it. Now, pull, the, the name of the game here is pressure, as Grim mentioned in his video. Pressure, pressure on the drill, pressure on the spool. How much pressure? I'm not yanking on this stuff. I'm just not. I'm just, just snug enough. Try and do this sitting down here. So I'm gonna fire it just a few times. And once I get it started, I'm gonna stop right there. Once you get it started, there we go. I'm trying to keep this all in the shot. I have it started here, you see this. I'm going to try and keep this all in the shot. I'm going to continue to go, but I want you to think of something when you're doing this. When you first do this, I want you to tell yourself you're going to waste some wire, you're going to mess up, and you're going to have fun doing this. This should be fun for you. You know, you just take a chance, you know. I know you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. So I'm going to roll this up. I like to be a little closer uh, to each their own. I just like to be a little closer, pull a little snugger, and pressure, pressure. Now, what am I doing here? I have pressure on the spool, correct? The name of the game here is, I'm only holding this spool tight enough, and I want to, I actually want to back up just a little bit more because I want you to watch the action of the spool. I'm holding this just snug enough that when this wire is twisting it can take this from me. I want this wire to take this if it wants it. I am by no means pinching the hell out of this. Set that up for me so I can get a good view here. There we go. Now watch the spool.
Now as you're watching it, I want you to notice. Imagine the front of the fuse that I'm doing right now. Notice how the spool is just a hair behind it. I have noticed that when I do this, then my wraps are a lot tighter. Do you see the angle? The point's here, but look at the angle of the wire. Let's continue on. I'm going to show you what happens when we let it get too far. Okay, there we go. I literally just wrapped over myself. Hopefully you can see that. See how I wrapped over myself there? Focus in there. There we go. See that out kind of went over it just a couple times? Here's how you fix that. Flip the drill. Just in the opposite direction that you're going in now. And as you barely hit the button, I want you to pull down with your spool. Stop. We're back to normal. Now that we've set the drill back to normal, I'm going to fire it. And I'm going to go up with it, and just until those ripples are gone. Now that the ripples are gone and I have straight. There we go. Do not, you don't need to go this fast. I want you to go this fast when you're comfortable. I'm going to adjust the camera just as soon as we get a shot here. everything right in the shot the best I can. Pull it nice and tight. See the bouncing, the jittering and all that? Don't stress about that. Just keep pressure. Pressure. Name of the game. I'm a little bit behind the point. You can see the angle there. Just barely, but you see it. Another thing is... I hope this isn't too much information to digest, man. So, here we are, right? You can stop, you can take a break, you can have a, have a you know, vape, whatever you need. Just get comfortable. I like to stand up when I do it, so I'm standing up right now. So here we are. One thing you don't want to do is lead the spool forward. Don't lead this. Just stay just behind it, just like the angle is. Just barely behind the cue. Keep pressure, and I want you to go like this fast at first, just until you feel it. When you get it down, faster. When you get that down, faster. But one thing for sure, don't be intimidated by this. And as you go, there we go, see that? See that? I held it too long. So I'm going to get a little closer to it, because remember what I said? You flip the drill back, pull down with it slowly. There we go. All the way to the end. Good. Flip the drill back, start again. Let the drill come, let the spool come up to your wire just until you get through those ripples. See those ripples in there? Hopefully you can see that. Then we start again. Now I want to show you what I do at the end here. When you get near the end, and I'm right there. What I do at the end is I actually want to do that mistake on purpose, but just a couple times. Okay, so I'm getting near the end. We're going, we're going, we're going. You can, you can take it pretty close. I like to leave a little space. And now I want to come back on it. Just twice, like two or three times. You can even go more. 
but I just go a couple times. Grab my spool holder. This is a nice little handy thing they give you. Pop it in and clip it right at your fused clap and bam. Just like that. Keeps it nice and neat. Nice and neat for you. I'm going to go ahead and set that off the side and back you up really far here. Let's take it out. It's as simple as that. You're done. You've just made a fused clap and coil. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to bring you over here more to my level. Unhook it from your spool. And that's why I kind of don't clip it in, you know. And you got yourself. Hopefully you get a good view of that. And it's twisted. You know what the twists in it? Easy as pie. And at the front, you can see this. The front, you just want to get it somewhat started. It almost tells a story, doesn't it? When you look at it. I wrapped it around there. That's how it's sat there. See how I have way excess poking out of the drill? That's fine with me. I'd rather have more than not enough. And then, just a couple of little turns and we're off and running. Nice and tight. Because we stayed just a touch behind it, I found wraps it a lot tighter. And you can do this by hand too. I just, you know, for this tutorial, I wanted to show you guys the easiest way that I have found. And this really is a simple way to do this. Let's take it up. Back it up completely here. God, so what do you think? Too much? Hopefully I threw in enough tips there for you. So now we have this completed strand, and you can see, you know, where we kind of messed up on purpose a little bit there. You can kind of see where that happened, and then you had to rewrap re it on. But really, you can't even tell. It's nice and shiny, nice and tight. I'm happy with it. I'm going to cut off the 90, the, the, the J there. But I'm going to leave this looped end. Nylon pliers. I got these at Michael's. They are called Beetleon. And that's exactly what they are. They're just nylon pliers. Nice and soft to wire. You can imagine, you can do this with your fingers, but I highly recommend at least one pair of these. And I got these for six bucks off of eBay. And these came janky, dude. Janky, janky. But after I brought new life back into them, a little lemon, a little salt, uh, I breathed new life into these. And they're working great. I use these, both of these. I highly recommend two, but if you can only afford one, get one. At least one. You can do it like this, where you clip it, and then you can use your finger and straighten out the, the bends, you know, those the curls you're going to get. Or you can use two like I use. So I'm going to go ahead, crimp it down, and I'm going to work my way down. When I see it needs to be straightened, I straighten it. I straighten it. And this is how I've I've done it ever since. I've I've had the two. This worked out really well. Not too many. I mean there's some in there, but it's not bad. And I want to do a tutorial about this because we're going to be seeing a lot of fused clapping coils in our future. I've seen these sell for anywhere up to from $12 to $30 a coil, or for a dual coil, for two of them. You guys can make these. You don't need to spend that much on a coil. You don't. I gotta tell you, it's a lot of fun to do it. It is. <laughs> but she's straight now. The old wire is nice and straight, it's nice and flat all the way through. I'm really happy with that. 
we can wrap with this. So let's build it. I got the old tenderfoot stand here. Accidentally hit the power button there. Adjusting this. Got the Royal Hunter here. Set that up. And there we go. We got the Hunter all ready to rock. Yeah, she's been through a war or two, hasn't she? Yikes. I think I have the wrong. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead. Tighten these down. Looks like the wrong ones. Open up. I always try and keep my other screws that I'm not using. Pardon me. Uh, you know, down. Open up these eyelets. There we go. That's what we're gonna be using. So first we need to wrap it, of course. I got a three millimeter driver here. We have our fused Clapton wire right here. And we're simply going to wrap it. And I'm gonna take my time here. I'm gonna lay it down. We're just going for a nice, tight coil here. Try and keep it in the shot, back it up. Now you can stick this in a vise, put your driver up to it, and then wrap it to make sure it's nice and straight and tight. But I've just done it with my fingers, which works fine too. It's nice and easy. Feels almost like you would do a parallel. Six wraps, three millimeter. We even have enough left over for one more. Anytime that I wrap this wire, if I can get another coil out of it, I'll go ahead and wrap it and stick it in a Ziploc bag. It's nice and straight for me. I'm happy with that. I'm going to clip the excess of what we don't need. It's on the verge of hitting the camera there. I always leave enough. Straighten that out a little bit. There we go. I always leave enough um, There we go. I always leave enough leg here to ensure that in case I want to add another wrap, I can. So, now that we have a pretty pretty standard coil here, you know, pretty standard as far as the way the legs are going, I'm going to go ahead and make them go in opposite directions. Opposite directions, just like this. I'm going to take my nail on one of the legs, and I'm going to put it right there on the leg, and I'm going to bend it right up on my nail. And I'm going to do the same again on this side. Take my nail, put it right on there, and bend it up so it matches up with the other one. Just a little slight bend. See how I did that? It's very easy to do. Just the slightest little bend. This is going to help me load it into the Royal Hunter. Let's go ahead and bust this out. So, we're going to load it in there. Just like so. And I'm going to put it fairly close to the center post, as you can see here. I'm going to try and get it a little closer than that. I'm going to throw in my driver. Not necessarily closer than that, but I won't, I'm going to try not to get much closer than that. 
we can go ahead and tighten down the positive here. A little closer. There we go. I like it a little closer to the posts in the Royal Hunter from what I've messed around with. There we go. See so you guys can see what's going on. Nice and snug here. And now I'm going to go ahead and center it. Just like that. Hold my driver, tighten down the positive one more time, and the negative one more time. That feels pretty secure. Yeah. That's good. I'm happy with that. And I can clip it. With a single coil, I'm not too concerned on the back here. I just kind of get them, you know. There's not going to be another coil for him to bump into, so I'm okay. That's what we're working with. Three millimeter. No problem. No problem at all. You can see the space from the center post. Just off of it. I find when I get closer to the center post, it gives me room to get any whatever tool I want that I'm going to be using. Usually a pick or a small or the smallest micro screwdriver I have to tuck the cotton in right here. There's plenty of room, see. Now centering it, well you're like, well Trevor, that's not as centered as you usually like. You're right. But I have found with fuse clapton coils that you really it doesn't really make a difference how centered it is for me. The flavor's always good and it always cooks every last bit of juice in your cotton. It just does. So let's measure it up. I've got the RX 200 here. It's going to measure a little low, like all nichrome 80 at first. 0 0.20. There we go. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to fire it. Ceramic tweezers, always ceramic tweezers. And I'm just going to pulse it at first. Try and keep it in the shot here. About 50 watts to start. And that's about where I'll leave it, by the way, to use it. Now I'm just going to pulse it here. And it's you're going to see it kind of start to work its way around. You're going to see the color start to change. And right there, I'm just touching it. Touching it. I'm going to need to give it a good solid pinch and fire at the same time. Hold it. Tighten those up just a hair here. And now, now in between each coil, there's grooves. Groove, 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 groove. I'm going to take my tweezers here, and I'm going to put my my tweezers on the inside of those grooves, and I'm going to push outwards, not hard, just barely, barely, barely. Now I'm just going to touch in there. There we go. You can strum it out. Works every time. You know, you can pinch it out or you can just strum it out. Strum works every single time. So, I just stick with the strum. However, I will warn you, if you can see it, yeah, you can probably see it, see those scrape marks? It didn't break the wire, it just has the marks on there. So, if you're like, 
you know, after you build your first fuse clapped and let's say you pull it off, man, you're stoked. You're like, that was easy. I can totally do this every time now, right? And you go to load this on Instagram, that's going to show up. So it's up to you whether you want that in your picture or not. Some people care about that. Me, I just care how it vapes. All right. And I'm super happy with that. I can set this off to the side just in here. And I actually already have some cotton, Japanese cotton here all twisted up but it's a little too hot right now to wick it there's another view of it so you know while it's cooling off let's talk about it there's a lot going on it feels like there's a lot going on but there really isn't some fishing swivels and a drill you know if you don't have these pliers it's okay I just use these to protect the wires you know, I have a Michaels, it's easily accessible to me, but seriously, you can find them for very, very cheap. All this stuff is very cheap, uh, with a little looking around. Can't recommend Harbor Freight enough. Great little store to pick up all your tools. I bet 90% of my tools is from Harbor Freight. Now that's cooled off, we can go ahead and wick this. And just like anything else, that side that needs to be a little rolled up a little better. Just like anything else. Pull through, tug on this side, your left, I'm going to tug, and then pull through at the same time. I'm just going to take my time here. That's good, right there. That's just where I want it. Let's see you little scissors. I just had some scissors just a second ago. Where did those go? There they are. I'm going to clip fairly far away on this side, and fairly close on this side. Throw those away. And let's see, there it is. I got my smallest micro screwdriver. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to push this down, push it against the base of the RDA there, of your dripper, whatever dripper you use, drag it up the base, and set it in. Just like that. And then just do a little organizing of it. Make a nice sphere. Nice little sphere. It's almost like a ball right off the end, like a barbell, you know? Same thing on this side. Drag it up the base, set it on in. I like single coil fuse claptons a lot. This is one of my favorite builds. It vapes like a dual coil. You'd be very surprised. Very, very surprised. There we go. See those scrape marks? And that's it, man. No problemo. Let's back it up. Actually, though, let's keep it forward. We want to put some juice on this thing. This is a juice I make. I call it Gremlin. We're going to go ahead and load it up right on the coils. You're going to watch it just absorb it. It's going to hold a ton. I mean, it just... So much. It's just crazy. It, it's just nuts. There we go. I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to load this up for a single coil. I'm going to have every single airflow hole I can wide open. Wide open. Right on it. Next up. Over here. Pop on the top. Add a mink to it. There we go. Done. We have a fused single coil in there. Now I'm about to tell you the total resistance of that. I'm going to back you up here. Total resistance is 
0.31. Let's go. Wait, what is it at? 50 watts. It, it, it's, a, it's a trip to me. I'm gonna get these off. It's a total trip to me. Reason being is it's just a single coil, you know? But it packs such a punch, it feels like a dual coil. Flavors out of this world, I'm telling you. The thing about Fuse Clapton's as well. I haven't messed with nickel hardly at all anymore. You can vape the cotton bone, and I'm talking bone white, and still not get dry hit. It just goes and goes and goes. You saw how much juice I put on there. It just, I could have added more. It just holds. the. I think of the coil as as a wick in itself. A wick on top of a wick. <laughs> it's crazy. You have all these nooks and crevices for this juice to go into now. And my theory is why you never really, like, I mean, you can obviously get a dry hit, but it takes some effort. You'll notice, the thing is, the flavor, you don't get that harsh, hurdy, kind of shocking, dirty, burnt taste. You almost just, you just get mute flavor. There's just nothing there. But the cotton is completely white. There's no burn marks on it, ever. And my, my theory is there's juice all within this coil that just keeps it lubricated throughout, inside and out. By no means am I like a master builder. Seriously, I'm not. <laughs> And I'm not um, an artistic style coil builder. I don't do aliens. I don't do anything like that. This is how far I've gotten so far in my journey. Is a fuse clapped in. I find them very, very superior to a regular round coil. For me. Far superior. The flavor is out of this world. This is just one and I'm getting beast flavor. And I'm talking thick and rich flavor. Weird little nuances right at the end. It's just like... It, it's nuts. Is it hot? No. It's not hot at all. It's not hot. It's not hot at all. It's like anything else. The harder you vape it, the hotter it's going to get. But I'm telling you right now, 50 watts, it's not hot. It's just gently warm to me. It feels fantastic. It's muting. It's muting. It's muted. I know I need more juice. Still no dry hits. You know what a dry hit is. We all know what it is. If you're a vapor, you know what a dry hit is. There you go, man. Bone white. Got a price sizzle when I put juice on it. Just a hair. Just a hair. That's it. When it mutes, I add more juice. I'm super happy with this build right now. I feel like Fuse Clapton's are an excellent way. Let's say you're one of those people like me. I was kind of getting in a funk. Everything kind of was like the same and not in this thing. I wasn't getting the full potential of stuff. I didn't feel like... Fuse Clapton's changed that. And I want to thank Rob Key for uh, really uh, giving me my first taste of these, man. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. You know, when I have this extra piece left, I can get another coil out of this, right? And I will. I will wind this up and I'll throw it in a Ziploc bag. These are some of the first ones I ever did. Like, I just keep them just to keep them. Why not? Why not, dude? You never know when you need them. Here's some more extras. When you have extras, make a coil out of it, throw it in a bag. You know, for how much these go for online anymore? Dude, I got like a ton of money here. But honestly, I didn't spend that much. I didn't spend that much at all. So, I'm hoping that my tips and tricks 
will help you on your journey in this. But I think you will find it's much easier and less of a task than you think. It's not a lot of work. It's, it's pretty cool to see your creation come to life after you sat there and you're just with this drill and you're kind of thinking to yourself, what am I doing, man? <laughs> you know? And, but once you get in that rhythm, it's over. It's over. You know, I can do pieces this long. No problem without even thinking straight through. Just blink, blink, blink. On the first, take your time. Once it catches a few grips, let it go. You want your wire from the drill to pull the wire from your hand. Just let it pull it. You're only pinching that just ever so gently, you know? I mean, you just barely got it in it, and when it wants it, it pulls it. And that's all it's gonna do. I mean, I could just barely let off my fingers and it's out of my hands. Like, there is no pressure on those spools. At all. So. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching, man. If you have any question for me, any questions for me, please feel free to email me at tjvapingreviews at aol.com or simply comment down below. This video will be linked in a lot of future videos coming up because we're going to be doing fuse clapping builds and quite a few things. Here's the thing. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm not going to use fuse claptons behind doors and say, hey, this is my favorite build in this Addy. I'm just not going to do that. It's not going to happen. I'm going to throw out a tutorial to teach you guys what I'm doing here. No hurry. No rush. Just... You know, there's always something here. There's always something on Grimm's channel. There's always something on a bunch of others, including the art of vaping. There are great tutorials that teach you how to do this simple technique to make a rad coil. It is rad, dude. Stoked. Um, so there you go. Tutorial up. You got this, man. Or simply comment down below. Let's end this. In classic form, dude. You know how we do it. Every time, man. Classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See you guys.